might want to pick it up. I need to clear a clearer sound that way. Feel free to scoop my stuff around too if you need to, Robert. It's not, not a problem. Good morning, brothers and sisters. God is good all the time. Uh, we're going to start off here. I'm going to let Mike Ferrari step up here. He's got a few announcements for us. and uh, So here's Mike. Thanks, sir. Well, good morning. Uh, well, as everyone knows, uh, every year we do the Operation uh, Shoebox with Samaritan's Purse. And I have a, if my iPad will open, I have a... Uh, well, maybe it won't open. Hold on. I have an email from them. And since my lovely uh, finger's wet from this wipe, it doesn't want to open. But I can tell you that we, uh, the boxes got delivered. And, man... Let me draw my finger off here. Don't you just love live? Yeah, go ahead and do prayer first, and then I'll get this. Oh, it just came up. So, <laughs> let me read it here. It says, Thank you for partnering with Operation Christmas Child and for donating online to discover the destination of your shoebox gift. The gift-filled shoebox you packed will share God's love in a tangible way and can impact not only the child who receives it, but also their family, friends, and community. Most importantly, please remember to pray for the child that received your gift. And it says our shoe boxes were delivered. Uh, they shipped on Monday, December 21st, and they arrived in January to Haiti. So there were kids in Haiti that got our shoe boxes. And I want to thank everyone because uh, we had a record number of shoe boxes this year. And 2021, when we do it, I want to have even a greater number. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Let us go to prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this glorious day. Lord, we thank you that we can come here into your presence in the name of your Son, Jesus, and give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. Lord, you, de you deserve more, but we give what we can, and we give all we can. Lord, thank you for your son. Lord, we know that there's so many people that are suffering. And we thank you for the donations of the shoeboxes that went out to Hades. And those children, Lord, I hope that that's a blessing to them. And it's a life-changing moment. Lord, you, do, you work miracles through just small things. So we thank you, Jesus, and we praise you, God. We all need you, Lord, and it's our honor and a privilege to serve you, and it's an honor and a privilege that you allow us to come here and worship you. Lord, we want to thank you for the small things that we neglect through the day to thank you for, the warm beds that we sleep in, the house that we have a roof over our head. Lord, we have a car that we can sit in with a heater and keep stay warm. Lord. Thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you for the, our leaders of our country. Be with them and help them to lead in your word, in your ways, in your will. Be with our medical staff as they treat and they're there for all that come in and sick. And we're, you're, you're blessed us so well that we have people that we can depend on. Lord, be with our churches, Mount Tabor and Jarrett. Bless each and every individual that comes and gives you the glory. Be with us as we go through the rest of this day and as we travel home. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. And amen. And now it's uh, children's time or children's church with Pat Riddle. Coming up next will be the affirmation of faith. And I'd like to make a small comment about that. In the affirmation of faith, you will we'll have the word Catholic with a small c that has a meaning of universal or wide reaching. This has nothing to do with a, or no relationship with the Catholic Church. So I just want to make that in case someone has a misunderstanding of it. So here's 
Pat Riddle with Children's Church. something today this shows what happened when somebody went to heaven the angel Gabriel was giving a newly arrived Christian a tour of heaven the two of them were walking side by side inside a large mail room filled with other angels Gabriel stopped at the first section and said this is the receiving section. Here are all the petitions sent to God in prayer for are received. The Christian saw that the section was a very busy one with so many angels sorting out petitions written on volumes of sheets of paper from all the people of the world. They resumed walking until they reached the second session section where they had to do some deliveries. Gabriel toward the, told the Christians, this is the package and delivery section. Here, the blessings of God in answer to prayers are packed and delivered to those who are praying on earth. The Christians saw how busy it was. There was a great many angels working in that room because countless blessings were being packed and delivered to earth. Finally, at the farthest corner of the room, they stopped at the last section. To the surprise of the Christian, only one angel was there, and he was idle. This is the acknowledging section, Gabriel said the Christian. How is it that there is no work being done here? Well, that's the sad thing, Gabriel answered. After people on earth receive the blessings that they ask for, very few of them bother to end their acknowledgments. How does one acknowledge God's blessings? Simple, Gabriel answered. Just say, thank you, Lord. So when we have a, ble a blessing or we have a prayer that we make because we are in need and that need is answered by God, don't, don't forget to remember and say, thank you, God. Thank you for helping me be with me and guide me the way I should need to go. Let us say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you here today thanking you for everything you do for us. You help us through the bad things. You're there when we have good times and we appreciate everything and the way you guide us the way we should be that we can help other people see you in us. In thy name I pray. Amen. <laughs> Pat was asking which radio station to listen in on. It's 94.1 if you have any problem hearing us here. And now it's time for our affirmation of faith. I will read each line and then pause for each, give you each time to say your part. I'd like to mention before I get started here that uh, there's a lot of nuts still running around Mount Tabor here, so 
If you're in need of any nuts, we, <laughs> we still have a few bags of nuts and uh, we would like to get them moved out so that uh, they can get that bring in. We're going to get ready to open our churches here hopefully very soon and so they can use that for Sunday school or something else. So if you can and you can use these nuts, contact uh, Darlene or Barbara and uh, we'd appreciate it very much. Here's the affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Pastor Robert several times has mentioned that in the book of the Mark's Gospel, he's more direct. He's more to the point than Matthew and Luke and John are. They go into more detail. And there's a scripture here in Mark chapter 8 that I usually just kind of read and then skip over because I go to the next part where Jesus asked, Who do people say I am? And then he goes on to say, Who do you say I am? Well, this part I was reading and kind of opened my eyes a little bit. So it's Mark chapter 8, verses 22 through 26. They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, Do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened. His sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home, saying, Don't even go into the village. Well, first off, I would like to mention... And you may have noticed, always before, Jesus only needed to touch or to speak one time, and that person was healed immediately. Why do we suppose that it took a second touch this time? Well, Jesus is always teaching you and I, just as though he did, their, did the disciples back then. Do we recall when we were first touched, when we were saved, and her eyes were opened. Well, I can only speak for myself, but I know my heart burned with hope. In my mind, I felt, why can't everybody see what, I'm, what I feel and what's happening to me? The weight of the world is lifted off of me. It reminds me of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. They were walking away dejected, and they were miserable, no hope. Well, Jesus touched this blind man, and he asked, do you see anything? He is asking you and me the same question. Do we see anything? What do we see? Is it men walking around like trees? Do we need a second touch like the blind man or the disciples from Emmaus whose hearts were burned when their eyes were opened as they realized who Jesus was? Are we seeing the people around us clearly? Are we seeing their hurt, their cry for help? Are they hungry? 
Are they being abused? Are they walking with no hope? Jesus asked, do you see anything? Do we need that second touch of revival in our hearts to see what is happening to around us? Are we comfortable with our blessings from God that it clouds our vision? Are we like the rich man in Luke 19, the rich man in Lazarus, that we're stepping over our callings? We're so familiar with our daily walk, our visions has become cloudy and blurred. We are dressed in our fine linens, we have enough to eat, and we have become so familiar and so comfortable that we even neglect to thank God for the little things that others around us are longing for. The ones that have no hope, only the dogs to comfort them. Jesus came to seek and to save, not the crowds. Jesus came to save every individual, including you and me. Everyone is known to him, and everyone, we all are valuable to him. Jesus did not and does not look at us as men walking like trees. Jesus does not see us as neighborhoods. Jesus sees you, me, and every individual that lives next door across the street as people with real needs. Pastor Robert does not have two congregations sitting in front of him. He has a collection of individuals with unique needs and heartaches and hurts. Brothers and sisters, we need Jesus' second touch so we can look at others through the eyes of Jesus. Until we receive that second touch, we will be continue seeing others walking like trees, and we can never see their needs, their hurt, and their anger. Like the man standing with a sign on the street, we pass by not knowing how hard he fought not to be there. We need revive, brothers and sisters, and we need to touch that second touch from Jesus that reopens our eyes. Let us begin seeking that touch as we welcome the word of God today from Pastor Robert's message. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come in your Son's name, Jesus. We always want to keep your name holy, God. Forgive us because we are truly broken. We fail you time and time again. Help us, Lord. We need you, Lord. And we need your second touch. We need you to open the eyes of our hearts. We need a revival of our souls. We need that power, that burn, that, that we felt when you first touched us. You gave us a zeal that we could taste your victory over sin and death. We know you allow us to go through challenges like this COVID to test our faith. But we're still here, Lord. You never gave up on us. We're not giving up on you. We need you, Lord. We cannot do it on our own. We can only have victory and do your will, Lord if you lead us. Thank you for hearing our prayer and thank you for listening. In Jesus' name we pray and amen. And now, here's our gifted and very talented Pastor Robert with our message. Good morning. Good place to be today. I'm glad we could be here. I know we uh, the weather forecast looked about 10 different ways <laughs> until uh, a couple of days ago. We weren't sure if it was going to be an icy mix or snow or rain or nothing. And uh, even late last night, looked out of the living room window up here at the Parsonage at about 11:30, and I went, "Man, if the roads look like that tomorrow morning, we're going to be a mess." So I'm glad uh, glad we are here today together. Um, before we move on with uh, prayer and with the sermon, do we have a couple of songs? So if you checked your email this morning, you'll find those. If you didn't, uh, I think they're fairly familiar. One of them definitely is. 
And uh, so if you'd like to sing, and uh, feel free to step out, stand in front of your vehicles, and uh, throw a mask on. I will hear too. And uh, we'll join together in some singing in just a second. It's not as bitterly cold today, which is nice. I'm grateful for that. I think we'll start with To God Be the Glory, and that's a good way to begin a day. So let's, uh, let's join together. We'll sing all three of these. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin and open the life gate that all may go in praise the lord praise the lord let the earth hear his voice praise the lord praise the lord let the people rejoice oh come to the father through jesus the son and give him the glory great things he hath done O oh, perfect redemption the purchase of blood to every believer the promise of god the vilest defender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. O oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. O oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. O oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Amen. I, I said a long time ago, I think my only beef with that song is that Fanny Crosby only wrote three verses. That is one of my favorite hymns. I love that. Uh, let's go to the other one, All Creatures of Our God and King, and uh, we'll do, let's see, there are five of these. Let's do, um, hmm, what do you think? They're not that long. We could do all five. You guys want to do all five? Yes? Well, we're going to do all five, so here we go. <laughs> all creatures of our God and King, Lift up your voice and with us sing. Alleluia, alleluia. Thou burning sun with golden beam and silver moon with softer gleam. Oh, 
praise him, oh praise him, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Oh rushing wind that art so strong, you clouds that sail in heaven along, oh praise him, alleluia. Rising morn in praise rejoice, oh lights of evening find a voice, oh praise him, oh praise him, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Oh flowing water pure and clear, Make music for your Lord to hear. Alleluia, alleluia. Oh, fire so masterful and bright, providing us with warmth and light. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him. Alleluia, alleluia. tender heart, forgiving others take your part, sing praises, alleluia, oh you who pain and sorrow bear, praise God and on him cast your care, oh praise him, oh praise him, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let all things their Creator bless, and worship Him in humbleness. Oh, praise Him, Alleluia. Praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Spirit, three in one. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Amen. Thank you, guys. You can be seated. Get ready to go to prayer here in just a second. Clean these glasses off. I saw you waving, but I couldn't tell what you wanted. Got a new one coming in. You're fine. Everybody's seated and situated in the sofa. Uh. All right, we have had a number of prayer requests come in and uh, several things to, that we've been given updates on, so let me uh, run through these and then we will join in prayer here. Um, uh, we've had, again, a number of unspokens, that's pretty typical of most weeks. I uh, have had some updates on some of the ones we had last week, and let me just tell you, prayer works and prayer helps. So when we lift those things up, even when we uh, don't specifically know the needs ourselves, God knows and He hears. So lift the uh, new unspokens this week, those ones that have continued, but we are thankful for some answers to prayer that we've heard. Um, let's see, we've got uh, several COVID-related requests. Of course, uh, Lucas, who we've talked about, is still recovering. Um, Ryan, and that is uh, Terry Meyer's friend, is recovering. And the one that has come in, his name is uh, Kendall, and that is Christine's cousin, and Kendall's in the hospital. So do pray for Kendall with uh, dealing with the COVID there. Uh, again, over the last couple of weeks, uh, three different uh, pastoral deaths among the West Virginia Conference. So do pray 
for uh, those families and those churches. Of course, Damon Bradshaw, who was over at Racine for so long, was the mayor of Chesapeake for a very long time. Uh, Mark Smith, and that was down at Duff Street Church. Uh, pray for them and for that church especially. And uh, Glenn Peisel, who was a retired pastor, uh, but he ministered with a lot of folks. His wife is, uh, is a licensed local pastor, is still very active uh, in their district, so do pray for them as well. Uh, we had a uh, prayer request come in this week, and uh, that's for Kevin Halstead. Uh, he is not recovering from surgery, but do keep him in your prayers. Um, Terry Rink is uh, dealing with some sickness, and also their family is still dealing with the uh, passing of a brother-in-law, so do pray for them. Uh, Arthur Elkins, this is uh, Kathy's brother-in-law, this one came in this morning. Uh, he had a stroke and was taken to the hospital in ICU. He is in a step-down unit already, so uh, that is a better prognosis than some, but do keep him in your prayers very much as well. Uh, Heather's son Harley had a, a, a surgery, just a minor one this week, to remove a cyst uh, on his leg. He's doing okay, he's recovering, but continue to pray for him also. Uh, Heather's dad is having an ablation in February. That's to help handle some AFib that uh, he has been dealing with. His name is Ricky Holstein, so do pray for Ricky if you would as well. Uh, Eddie Proctor, this is a friend of Sammy, uh, Sandy Armentrout, uh, having or had open heart surgery this past Thursday, so do pray for him. Uh, continued prayers for Sam Ratliff, um, just for his uh, continued healing, for his heart, for his AFib, those things. Uh, Judy's sister, of course, Judy Skidmore, passing of her sister this past week. And uh, um, Heather, I'm not sure I can read the last one. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Um, and for uh, Tommy Epling uh, down the road here, uh, Jared, uh, he needs our prayers this morning as well. So let's, uh, let's lift all of these together. And if you have unspoken, lift those in your hearts too. And we know God moves and God works. And so we'll lift those to him as well. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you this morning that we can come together and praise your name, that we can get into your word, we can join you at your table. And uh, Lord, there's uh, a lot of ways and, uh, that you could choose to interact with us, but Lord, you choose to come close and to speak into our spirits and to join us in our worship because you're a loving God. And Lord, we thank you for that because there's so many other things you, you could be, but Lord, you, you have uh, chosen to love us and we're so, so grateful for that. Lord, we're grateful that when we pray, you hear us. We think of these requests this morning, Lord, the unspokens that have been lifted anew this week, and Lord, for those that have been answered last week, we ask that you would uh, continue to be with those who still have needs, and Lord, we thank you for those that, that you have moved in already, and that we've seen your hand evident. And we think of those dealing with COVID for Lucas and for Ryan, who are recovering, and Lord, for Kendall, who is still in the hospital. We ask for those three, all of them, that you would reach in with your healing grace, and Lord, for those who are recovering, that you would continue to speed that recovery, and Lord, for Kendall in the hospital, that you'd reach in and drive that virus out, Lord, that you would just work in the lungs and in the body to remove that, Lord, in a powerful, mighty way as only you can. Or we think of the churches on our conference dealing with the losses of pastors and former pastors, Lord, for those who uh, are mourning Damon or Damron and Mark and Glenn, Lord, these were servants of yours. And so, Lord, we ask that you be with their families and ask that you be with their uh, church families, both past and present, as uh, they wrestle with these losses and these griefs. Lord, these are tough, tough times to go through anything like that. And Lord, we think especially of those that are uh, that are wrestling real hard with this right now ask that you'd be with them in a powerful way. Lord, we remember that you are the God of all comfort and the Father of mercies, as you tell us. And Lord, draw close to them this morning. Think of Kevin Halstead as he is recovering from surgery. And Lord, ask that, that you would continue to be with him in his recovery. Thank you that the surgery is passed, Lord, that the doctors were able to do what they've done. But ask that you would continue to be with him. Uh, in the coming days and weeks as he recovers. Lord, we think of Terry with the illness that she's dealing with and ask that you would move on her in a mighty and powerful way as only you can. Lord, dispatch that healing grace from your hand directly to her. Lord, we ask that you would restore her this morning in all things. Ask that you be with her family as well as they are dealing with the loss of this brother-in-law. And Lord, again, surround them with that comfort, that peace that only you can give. 
Think of Arthur Elkins uh, in Texas this morning, more dealing with the stroke, and we're thankful that he is in, the, in a step-down unit from the ICU, and ask that you would continue to bless and move in him this morning, Lord, with your mighty and healing grace. Lord, thank you that Harley's surgery went well, and ask that you would continue to, to be with him in his recovery, Lord, that you would continue to, to knit that leg all together as it's supposed to be, and that he would have no further complications. We think of Heather's dad, Ricky, Lord, going in for the ablation next month, and Lord, we know that is a, a scary thing. It can be, but Lord, we also know that that is wisdom that you've given to these doctors who can do things like that to correct problems like AFib. So Lord, we ask you to be with the doctors, be with Ricky, Lord, be with everybody involved, that this would go just as smoothly as it can, everything would go well, and that your hand would be evident there. We think of Eddie this morning recovering from open heart surgery and ask that you would continue to be with him in these days and weeks upcoming. Lord, we're thankful for things like that and processes like that that can, can restore things like the heart. Lord, continue to bless him and be with him. And Lord, for Sam also, uh, that you would continue to, to heal him. Lord, bring him to full health. And Lord, that we, we commit him totally to you. We know there have been some, some roadblocks in the way with some of this treatment. But Lord, we know that you know what those are. You know how to move them out of the way. And Lord, we ask that you would heal him directly right now. Think of Judy's family, Lord, on the loss of her sister, and ask for your comfort there. Uh, Lord, as only you can give. We know those times of being brokenhearted are, are very difficult times, but Lord, we know that you sympathize with that. We know that when you lost your friend Lazarus, that you wept over him. And Lord, we, we know that we have a God who understands. And Lord, we're thankful for that. We ask for your comfort and your peace for this family right now. And Lord, we think of Tommy this morning. Lord, we know how faithful he's been and, and also many of the struggles that he has had. And Lord, we lift him to you and commit him into your care completely, asking for a touch that he needs from you. Lord, that doctors can do a lot and nurses have done a lot. And Lord, we ask that you'd be with him, also with Carolyn this morning as well. Lord, bless them in a mighty way today. Lord, be with us as in the rest of this service. Be with me as I preach. Be with us as we join together at your table. And Lord, we thank you that through these simple means of bread and cup, we can meet you in a powerful way that is like no other. Bless us and guide us this morning, we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Let me get situated here. <laughs> we are going to be in the Gospel of Mark again today. We were there a couple of weeks ago, uh, two or three weeks, with the baptism of the Lord, and then uh, we've bounced around a little since then through another gospel and through a psalm, and we're going to land back in Mark today. Mark chapter 1 uh, will be about halfway down. We'll pick up in verse 21 in just a couple of minutes. There are a lot of things that you and I know, just facts about the world around us that, that we can all agree to. You know, two plus two is four, for example. I, I, I do not know another way that that problem comes out. We all know this. You know, the sky is, well, uh, well I have written here that the sky is blue. The sky is blue most days. <laughs> it's a little gray this morning. The, the earth is round. The moon is visible at night, sometimes during the day. Things like that. Objective facts that we all know in our heads and in our minds. Facts like these that are, are true. We, they don't really need to go any farther than our heads. That's where they serve their purpose, for knowledge. So, I mean, sometimes they serve purposes when you use that knowledge for things. I mean, even in the case of like the sun and moon and stars, you can use that for navigation. You can use the two plus two to help your kids and grandkids with their math homework. And that works very well as head knowledge. That's totally where that's supposed to be. What about our knowledge of Jesus? If we know who he is, in our heads, is that enough? Does this knowledge need to travel somewhere else? Does it need to travel down to the heart to really make the difference? And today we're going to meet a man who was in the synagogue, uh, ostensibly for worship, but he had carried with him an unclean spirit, a demon that was in him and on him, and then he meets Jesus. What happens next, and what what the demon says, and then what happens to the man at the end. And these are all lessons that we need to pay attention to. So we're going to look at them. Mark chapter 1, we're going to begin at verse 21. 
Mark chapter 1, beginning in verse 21. And as, uh, as Ira correctly said earlier, the Gospel of Mark is the one that tends to move the fastest. Um, the word that gets translated into the word immediately happens more often in this Gospel than any other place in the entire Bible. And so Mark moves fast. And so even in this story, we see similar ones recounted in other Gospels that go on for a long time. We get, we get eight verses for this entire story here in Mark. So Mark chapter 1, beginning in verse 21, and you're going to see that word pop up real quick. Scripture says this, They went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and was teaching. They were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere, throughout all of the surrounding region of Galilee. Let's pray together. Lord, as we get in here this morning, we ask that you would bless this message first and foremost, Lord, that, that your anointing would be on this, and that it would be for your glory totally. Lord, we ask that you would open this to us and show us that when we struggle with those things that hang on us or even have a hold of us, that you can break those things out of us in a moment. But Lord, that our knowledge of you cannot stop in our heads, and it must travel to our hearts, where it does us no good. Be with us this morning, we pray, Lord, bless the bringing and the teaching and preaching of the word. For your glory alone, we pray. Amen. So this encounter in the Gospel of Mark is pretty early on, obviously. We're, we're in chapter 1. We already see that Jesus is setting the stage for what his ministry is all about. He goes into the synagogue on the Sabbath and was teaching. That's, that's primary for, for how Jesus gets this message across to folks. His primary ministry was to teach. He did miracles, sure, and those proved that God's power resided in him and that it was indeed his power because Jesus is God. But his primary purpose was to teach. To teach so that we may know him, and thereby know God the Father and God the Spirit. And he taught, and this is an interesting, it's, it's a, a, an important point to make here, that he taught as one having authority. Now that's, that's very different than the other scribes and other elders who would have taught then and, and who teach now, frankly. Um, I am not an ordained elder. I am a licensed local pastor. I'm working toward all of that. But, but take me, for instance, okay? I do not teach under my own authority. I don't. I study I, I, a lot. If you walk into the, the basement of the parsonage right now, there are five or six commentaries open on the desk and a, a ton of other books. There's probably a thousand books in that room, uh, a lot of which are reference things that I look at and use when I'm studying and putting sermons together. But, you know, I can study a lot. I can dedicate myself wholeheartedly to that as I'm preparing the messages, but my teaching, my preaching is not on my own authority. First and foremost, and above all, the authority for any teaching and preaching I will ever do is from God, and it's through His Word. And if I ever begin to teach in some other way, or I begin to teach something else, it's time for me to hang it up. Exactly. But even beyond that, okay, like I'm not even here in Elkview on my own authority. Anybody remember that meeting like four months before I was assigned here at the PPR and and we knew that there was going to be the switch that Danny was headed toward Aldersgate and that I was coming here. And I, and I can, first of all, if you remember that meeting, you know I was terrified coming into that meeting. I came through the door like a little kid sneaks around the corner. I was, I was so nervous. But we came and we met with the PPR. Who led that meeting? You remember? The district superintendent led that meeting. Now that DS is retired, but I'm under another one now, Joe Hill, who most of you have met. 
He's the district superintendent here, and he is under the authority of the bishop. And it's the bishop in the cabinet that appointed me, so I come under their authority as far as the Methodist church structure goes. God's authority ultimately and above all. You, you see how all this kind of winds around? There are a lot of other authorities above me. I don't come on my own authority. No pastor does. But the point is also that these teachers in the synagogue would have been under similar structures of authority. You know, you would have had like overarching bodies that had authority over these places. But Jesus did not come under authority. He came with authority. And that's a small difference, but man, that's a big difference. His own authority. And that's something that could not just be conferred by someone else. That came by the nature of who he is. He's not merely repeating traditions or teachings of others. He taught on his own authority because he was and is the Son of God. So Jesus comes that way and then vividly demonstrates for us here his power and authority over the enemy and all of his forces. Folks, before I go any farther through the sermon notes, let's be clear here. There is an enemy. He has dark forces still, demons and spirits and that stuff that, that do their best to try to derail us. Let me reiterate this sentence again that Jesus demonstrates for us here, and this hasn't changed, his power and authority over the enemy and all of his forces. We can be sure of that. We can rest in that. The demoniac enters. This demon-possessed man enters, and the demon speaks, which would be terrifying, I'm sure, to most of the rest of the listeners. It would be to me. But notice what he says. He says, I know who you are. And he properly names Jesus as the Holy One of God. The demon knows who Jesus is. He recognizes him immediately. Knows who he is, knows what he's come for. But notice that the demon does not make any sort of allusion to repenting for what he has become or what he's done. Remember that demons are fallen angels. They were once on God's side and they rebelled and they fell. But we don't we don't get any glimmer of any repentance, any remorse for this here. Just the acknowledgement. I mean the demon knows who Jesus is and it stops there. And Jesus commands the demon's silence, commands it out of the person that the demon is possessing and so with convulsions and shrieking the demon comes out. Leaves this person. This man came into the synagogue carrying all sorts of uncleanliness with him. He's met with the power and authority of Jesus Christ, the recognition of who he is. But listen, if that uncleanliness had not been taken from that man, what good would the encounter have been? If he hadn't fallen, you know, convulsing, he's probably fallen. If he hadn't fallen and been released from that uncleanliness that was all over him, what help would it have been? It wouldn't have been, would it? If he met Jesus but did not get rid of the other junk that was with him, what good is it? My friends, we too encounter Christ, the same Christ in all of his power and authority. And I'd, I'd venture to guess that if you're here this morning in the rain, first of all, God bless you. Thank you for coming out. But if you're here this morning, if you're watching online this morning, for those of you on the cameras, you probably know who he is. He's the Son of God. He's the Holy One. He's the Savior of the world. He's the Savior of us. If you can claim that as your own, then you've got hope forever. <laughs> But if that knowledge goes no farther than your head, and all you do is know it, but you drive back out of here with all the uncleanliness that you might have driven in here with, what good has it been? And maybe you're somebody who knows Jesus in your head, but you think he wouldn't want your heart. There's just too much in there that you're sure he wouldn't want to see. You'd never be good enough for that church crowd if you're watching online. Or, or maybe this one. If the pastor knew what I'd done before, he'd never be telling me I could be saved. Folks, let me, let me, let me fix that little perception problem here. 
There's a song from, uh, it was a contemporary Christian song in the late 90s. It was called We Fall Down. It, it's not the worship song that a lot of people know. It's a different one. It was by a contemporary Christian artist named Bob Carlyle. Uh, if that name doesn't jump out to you, he's the butterfly kisses guy. But Bob Carlyle puts out this song. It's called We Fall Down. And in that song, it tells a story of a peasant in a village who is walking past a monastery every day as he goes to and from the market for work. And this guy wonders what it's got to be like to be locked away from the world, you know, well-fed and taken care of every day. And so finally, one day as he's walking by, he sees one of the priests outside and, and asks him, he said, what is it like in there? Tell me of your life in that place. And the priest's response is simply, we fall down and we get up. The same as everyone else. And the chorus ends with this line. It says, and the saints are just the sinners who fall down and get up. And we do. We fall, hopefully not continually in our sins and such. But listen, we've all fallen. The difference is that now, when we fall, we land on our knees and we know that Christ is there to hear us, to forgive us, and to help us to get up again. We fall down, but we get up. And folks, that is everyone. If, if you are someone who says, I can't keep walking this way, that's okay. You don't have to walk this way. You fall to your knees, but as you do, know who he is and move that knowledge from your head to your heart. So that when you land on your knees, you'll look to Christ. He'll take the uncleanliness. This that that guy came in carrying with in the synagogue, this demon possession, folks, that's, that's bigger than most things you can carry to Jesus. And Jesus looked right at that guy and took his uncleanliness. Folks, if you're worried about what is in your heart being too much for Jesus to handle, don't worry about that. He wants it. Give it to him. He'll take that shame. He'll take the guilt. He'll take whatever it is that's been weighing you down and keeping you from him so that when he's through with you on your knees, you can get up again. Because the saints are truly just the sinners who meet Jesus and fall down and get up again with his help. Now, if you've come to know the power and the authority of Jesus and you know who he is, but you've never moved that knowledge to your heart, do it. It's the most important thing you will ever do. Because know this, that the Jesus who casts out demons them is the Jesus who loves you today, and he's no different now. Jesus who raised up that formerly demon-possessed man can raise you up, even when you didn't think it was possible. Because his authority says that those things that weigh you down can be gone from you. If you know him, we're going to have communion in a few minutes, and I know a few folks have said this is the last Sunday of the month. Yeah, you can blame that one on me. I forgot that January had 31 days. I thought this was February. We were ready to do communion. You know what? We'll do it two weeks in a row. We'll do it next week, too. I've mean, got no problem with that. But listen, if you know him, come to this table today. And folks, if you need to know him, come to this table today. This table is a place where we don't just taste some bread and some juice, but that we meet Jesus Christ in a powerful, unique way. His presence is here in a way that it's not anywhere else. And if you need that today, you come, because this table is for you too. Fall down, hit your knees, but look to Christ. As you go down a sinner, but folks, you'll come up a completely different way. You'll come up one of God's own. You'll come up one of God's children because you are beloved and known and prized by majesty. Because folks, just like this demon-possessed man who walked in here and walked out a completely different person, the saints are just the sinners who fall down and who Christ raises up again. Amen. We're going to go to the table in just a second, as we do, let me uh, cover just a couple of couple of quick things with that. As soon as I remember where that, there we go. <laughs> um, everything's in different places on the iPad. Once in a while, you have to 
I appreciate your patience. Um, as we do this, uh, I will, of course, be demonstrating and, and doing the liturgy with the chalice and the bread. We used Mount Tabor's last time. We're using Jared's this time. We'll try to switch them back and forth for the time being. Um, but I will use this bread and this cup, but what we will distribute will be the pre-packaged, pre-sealed ones that we haven't touched. Uh, those are in the baskets up here, so we'll consecrate those in just a second. Uh, after we're done with the prayers and with the liturgy, um, we'll come around to the driver's side of each car. Uh, you can just roll it down quickly, and that way we will uh, hand it to you for everyone in your car. Hopefully you don't get too damp. It is raining pretty good out here this morning. Um, when, we, when we do get ready to do that, I'll ask you to turn your flashers on on your car, and uh, that way we'll know who we've covered and who we haven't. It's just an easy way for us to to catch it. So watch for those. We'll be gloved and masked. I'll be putting those on in just a minute as we do this, um, as, as we come around. And uh, we'll go ahead and get set for communion. Joining at the table today. tell you there have been a lot of firsts in the last year uh, we've done communion outside a couple of times that was a new thing I'm, I don't think we've ever done it in this much rain before the new thing too appreciate the patience of all of you and if you know the responses feel free to say them I'm not gonna be able to hear you anyway so I will say them from up here as I can the Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth or you had formed the earth from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. In his baptism and in table fellowship, he took his place with sinners. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. 
By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, just poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. Make them to be for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you. the blood of Christ shed for you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Heather comes, we are going to glove up and then we'll come around. Again, we're just going to come to the driver's side door, uh, to the window there, if you'll tell us how many you need. We know we've had a couple of uh, couple of folks who've asked to take communion to others, and so we have those made up already. Um, if that is something you find out you need, or folks who are watching online, if you need communion at home, we can bring it by to you this week. Just let us know. As we come around again, don't forget the uh, the top clear seal, the one with the logo on it. The one you'll need to pull off first to get to the wafer, and then that silver seal below it will open up the juice. If you just pull the silver one, your wafer will end up stuck between the two seals. We'll ask if anybody needs help or is having trouble after we come back up here. Um, also, when you when I get to your car or when Heather gets to your car, you can either take it then or you can wait and we can take it together. That is up to you. I will take it when I come back up here. And uh, so whichever you would prefer, you're welcome to do. 
Uh, please turn your hazard flashers on, and when we get to your car, uh, we you can turn them off after we've given you the communion elements. Anybody, anybody need any help with their with their uh, wrappers? If you do, hit your flashers. We'll come on over. Think we're good. Okay. Body of Christ, broken for you. And the blood of Christ, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the communion with the body and blood of Christ. Lord, we ask that you would strengthen us and be with us in a powerful way this morning through and because of this sacrament. Lord, for those who are unable to be with us this morning, we ask that your spirit would be with them in a powerful way. Lord, that you would set a spirit of communion in their hearts. Lord, for those who will receive later, we ask for that same blessing. Be with us this morning, we pray, and be with us this week. We ask it in the name of Christ. Amen. I don't know that, uh, I, don't know that I have much in the way of announcements at all. Um, I know we had said we're going to be outside for the foreseeable future. We will for at least the next few weeks. Um, relaunch team, let's aim for the end of February to meet, probably in that last week if we can and uh, we'll kind of chart our course. Uh, as the vaccines are coming out, we're watching those numbers, and, and we know a number of you have, have received at least one dose of the vaccine, which is exciting. Um, 
And for, for folks watching online or who don't know, that's not something we're like tracking our people down and asking them. That's just stuff that folks have told us. And uh, we're, we're grateful to hear that. It's always good news. Um, but as we're kind of watching this and we're kind of seeing where all the numbers are, uh, we're hopeful that, you know, perhaps uh, before too terribly long, we could think about moving back inside. I know that's a, there's a whole lot of caveats in that sentence, and that was for a reason. You know, we're still watching closely. Uh, we don't want to do it until it's safe, but uh, we feel like with the vaccine coming out, we're at least starting to see some of the light at the end of the tunnel. So uh, praying that that will uh, move a little quicker than we expect. But uh, yeah, relaunch team, let's look at the end of February. I think that would be good for us to, to get together again and kind of look ahead. I believe that is everything. Do what? Oh, yes. Uh, in the, the, the coming few days, uh, we're going to be trying to get that print newsletter out. We've been working on it, and uh, that'll be a joint thing. We do have some stuff from uh, both UMW presidents, for instance. Those will both be in there. Uh, if you have announcements, if you have something you'd like to share in the newsletter, you know, I mean, it doesn't even have to be news. Maybe you've written a poem or just have something you'd like to share in there. Let us know. Send that to us. And uh, we'll try to get that in there for everybody. Uh, but uh, if you have any questions or something you'd like to contribute, let us know. I believe that is it for this morning. So thank you guys for coming out in the rain. I know this was, uh, I mean, I know everyone's in their vehicles, but still, you know, sort of a less than pleasant time to, to be on the lot. I appreciate you all very much. Uh, I know the last year has been a little crazy and we're, uh, constantly having to switch and move and change and I just I, I mean I, I know I've said this before but seriously my my heartfelt thanks for all of you who have just gone with wherever we had to go uh, you've uh, you've been awesome and you still are I'm so grateful for you let's close with a benediction and uh, don't forget let's let the uh, second and third rows out first and then the front row up here it'll be the easiest way to get everyone down and through let's close now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit empower you, go with you, and be with you now and evermore. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. God bless. We'll see you next week.